If you stop and think about it, that's what it is. Just moving things from where they're worth less to where they're worth more. I think I had some fun business experiences. A particular one I remember very clearly was in, in the fifth grade. I was enrolled in a public school, a government school, but it was a special program where the students all called the teacher by their first names. And my teacher's first name was Lindy, so everybody called her Lindy. And they made special class fiat currency called Lindyland dollars. And all the kids in the class got to use Lindyland dollars. And like maybe once every month or every two months, they'd have you know the kids in business day and all the kids could bring from whatever at home and they would buy and sell them in class for the Lindyland dollars and all the kids would be paid each week like a salary for doing work around the classrooms. And I remember very clearly uh, all the kids voted for what job would get paid what amount and the job that got paid the most was taking the lunch cart from the classroom to the cafeteria because you would miss like five minutes of your recess time and when you're in the fifth grade recess is the most important thing in life. But I, I wanted to earn those Lindyland dollars so I would push the, the lunch cart to the, the cafeteria every single day. But then I remember when they had the kids in business days a lot of kids for whatever reason didn't understand the difference that one Lindyland dollar was not worth one US dollar. The actual exchange rate was somewhere in the ballpark of maybe 50 to 1. But lots of you know, kids and, and girls in particular, they'd bake cookies and they'd bring in cookies to, to buy and sell or Rice Krispie treats as well. I like those more than cookies. And they would sell them for like one Lindyland dollar per Rice Krispie treat. And like if they were US dollars, okay, that's the right price. But like for Lindyland dollars, no, it wasn't. And so I remember I had the Lindyland dollars and I bought all the Rice Krispie treats. And then instead of selling them for a dollar, I sold them for more. I had cornered the market in Rice Krispie treats in the class. And then at the end of the day, I wound up with, I had lots of Lindyland dollars and lots of Rice Krispie treats left over. So it was kind of a fun experience. And it was a fun learning experience to realize that printing more money causes inflation, right? There were lots of Lindyland dollars floating around in class. So the price per Krispie treat was around 50 Lindyland dollars, maybe in the first semester of the school year. But by the end of the school year, the price was maybe up to 200. So I got to see in the course of just a few months the inflation being caused by the new Lindyland dollars being issued each week into the class economy that the prices of things went up and so maybe that was my first experience seeing inflation in action. Then in junior high I used to sell candy bars to the other students. One of the teachers was selling candy bars to students to like raise money for something or other. And I thought, well, if she can sell candy bars, I can too. So my parents were nice enough. They, they took me to Costco where you could buy candy bars for like 20 cents each. And I had me, you know, maybe 20 bucks of my own money that maybe I found coins and couch cushions or whatever in, in junior high school age. But I bought, spent all of it on candy bars and then sold them at school for like 50 cents each. I was able to earn, I don't know, maybe 20 or $30 a week selling candy bars in junior high school. And as a junior high school kid, that was a lot of money. In high school, I got some normal jobs. Uh, I worked at uh, Changing Oil for Cars, and I worked at a video game arcade, and that was really fun. Then I worked at uh, an ISP in their you know, network operations center for a while, and that was fun. And then uh, while I was in college, I wanted a new hard drive for my own computer. And I saw in the Silicon Valley Mercury News, the physical old newspaper that you would hold in your hand, uh, there was like different auctions from these companies that were going out of business around uh, 1999 or 2000 when the dot-com bubble was starting to burst and uh, I thought oh maybe I can get a good price on a new hard drive at one of these auctions so I went to one and I remember very clearly you know here we are more than 20 years later it was a nine gigabyte SCSI hard drive and they were selling them for a hundred dollars each and then I went home and looked on eBay and they were selling the exact same hard drive they were selling on eBay for almost four hundred dollars each they were selling for like three hundred eighty dollars each and I thought wait a minute I can buy these for $100 each and I can sell them for almost $400 each on eBay. I'm going to use every last penny I have to buy these hard drives. So I had $1,400 of my own money. I bought 14 of those hard drives. I kept one for me and I sold the other 13 on eBay. And so I made almost $300 each times 14 you know, drives. So I made uh, almost $4,000 there, right? I made around $4,000 and it took about a week to do that. Wow, that was a really, really good deal. And I realized that I could do this more and more with more and more computer parts. And so I went and took the $4,000 that I made in profit plus the $1,400 I had before, so I had around $5,000, and I went and bought 
$5,000 worth of additional computer parts. And I sold those pretty quickly within a week for, you know, maybe I got $10,000 and it took, you know, another week or something. And I realized, wait a minute, I can make, you know, $5,000 a week just selling these computer parts on, on eBay. I'm done with college. And so I told my parents that I was quitting college and they were really upset. And they said, please, please, please don't. Not only did they do that, I said, I'm, I'm quitting college to sell used computer parts on eBay. Like 1999, eBay was not respectable. The internet itself, e-commerce was not respectable. Like it was so clear, like you could make really good money without a lot of work. The first $4,000 or so I earned from selling those hard drives, that was probably the most exciting money I ever earned. When the, the postal money orders would come in the mail, it was more exciting than any Christmas I had as a kid because it was like, what is the postman gonna bring in the mail today? And I would open the mail and they'd have the postal money orders and the address where to ship it and the, the auction number. And it was just such an exciting thing. And for a couple of years until PayPal got started, it was so exciting. The mailman was like Christmas every day. If you think about it, all any business is, whether it's selling used computer parts on the internet or you know selling alcohol at a bar or producing you know, video content for YouTube, all any business is, is moving something from where it's worth less to where it's worth more. And the value is in the mind of the beholder, right? It's not in the object itself. You hear a lot of people all over the place talk about intrinsic value, that you know, gold has intrinsic value or this has intrinsic value. No, nothing has intrinsic value. The value is in the mind of the beholder. A giant you know, one kilogram bar of gold sitting on this table here would have no value whatsoever if there weren't human beings on the earth to behold it, right? The value is in the mind of the beholder and all any business is, is moving things from where they're worth less to where they're worth more. If you stop and think about it, that's what it is. Just moving things from where they're worth less to where they're worth more. And my business was starting to get some name recognition within the other dealer to dealer marketplace and uh, got up to around, I think eight or 12 people at this point and then, uh, then I got arrested.